right, so we're going to talk today about some of the underlying principles of 133, which is a manuscript written somewhere between the uh, 12th and 14th century. Um, I don't think anyone knows exactly what the, the time date is on that. Um, it's one of the oldest manuals we have on martial arts practice, and it involves the practice of sword and buckler. Um, so sword uh, is going to be an arming sword for this. So this is a classic sword that maybe you'd see a knight carrying and a buckler which looks like a really small shield um, which might seem kind of goofy at first but um, a buckler was either something you might start a kid off with right so a little kid would have this kind of guy um, to start training to be a knight just like today um, kids would have little little shields and little swords and stuff and then um, if you were going to go out on the town or something right having this little thing on your side this little buckler on your side is better than carrying a giant shield around right so guys wouldn't carry big shields around they'd carry a little shield like this um, and the reason why we need this shield is really important, we'll see, see here in a few minutes. So we're going to talk about the, the major principles that we see in I-33, 133, uh, and why those principles are important. One of the first things to understand is what in modern times would be called measure. So measure is the distance it takes me to hit someone. Uh, ideal measure in modern fencing terms, let me borrow someone here. Uh, ideal fencing in modern, uh, or ideal measure in modern fencing terms would be being able to touch her on a step, like one long step and being able to touch her, right? So I can either thrust or hack at her, um, but I'm able to make this kind of big movement here with my legs and get to her. So that is measure. Right now we're in measure and I can, I can get her. Meaning I'm in a measurement that I can touch her. If I step just this much back, I am now out of measure because on my biggest step, I can't possibly get her anymore, right? I can go as far as possible and I can't touch her. That makes a big difference when you're talking about any kind of contact practice, right? So whether that contact practice firearms, meaning a practice where one person's shooting at another person, or whether it's boxing, right? So two people trying to make contact in a ring with empty hands, or knives, or swords, or sticks, or whatever it is, that's a contact practice. That measurement's really, really important because the further I get away from her, that means the more actions I have to make to get to her. So for example, if I'm this far back, I've got to take one, two, three steps before I'm at her, right? That's a lot of time for her to decide what to do. She could decide to run away in that time or cover, block, or attack me or throw something at me. Who knows what? So I want, when I launch an attack, I want the, the smallest amount of actions that she can do possible for my, my launched attack, right? So, and that's right about here, where just on that step, I'm able to make contact with her, which is what I'm looking for. So that distance is really important. If she were to have her sword out, uh, without the buckler, just the sword out. Okay, so our sword's sticking out like that. Now, for me to get to her hand is even easier than any of the other step, right? Look, I took a little small step and I'm easily able to make it there, contact to her hand. So which means if we're fighting with swords like this and my objective was simply to hit her hand, right? So she comes to get me and I do this, that's my objective is just to pop her hand, then I'm gonna be able to cut her hand into a way that it can't be used anymore, right? If I chop off a pinky, pretty hard to use your hand. If I cut her wrist or took her whole hand or arm off, she'd be hard for her to use her sword. Then I'm essentially gonna win. I don't have to make up all that distance. I just have to be able to go to the hand. So what she needs that buckler for is to keep that buckler always right next to that sword. So if I try to get to that hand, you can see the buckler now protects it. What's nice about the buckler is if I attack from there, she could have it there. If she wanted to roll the buckler over to the other side, she could protect from there. If I tried to come on top to get her hand, she could keep it there and dip on top on the other side as well. So that little small buckler, this little tiny thing, does a really valuable service to us when we're talking about some kind of contact art. It enables us to protect and cover our hand from anything that could be coming in. So that's one of the main principles of I-33, and it's uh, understanding distance and understanding the, the buckler and what it's for and how you need to be able to protect your hand. We're gonna talk about some other things in further videos.